The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the July 1st, wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having an extraordinary Wednesday. Let's make sure that we do everything we can to have a great day. Of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right, that one little two-by-four ship, it makes all the difference in the world. It means you and I, we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us today. We'll go take a look at the circumstance of the bulls and the bears out there. And I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here today. Hey, whether it's live, whether it's archived, however it is, thanks for spending some time with me. I'm absolutely here to serve you, so feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Tell me what you're looking at, or let me assist you with uh, whatever it is that uh, you are trading out there, or any question that you might have. Internationally, you can also call us at 727-445-1044 on this wonderful Wednesday here at Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow is up 78 points. She's trading at 17,698. S&P's up 7 points, trading at 2,070. Composite up 8 points at 49.95. Russell 2,000 back 3 points as we speak right now. DAX had a decent day, finished up 235 points. The FTSE was up 87. Goldilocks not doing much, back a buck right now. Silver is flat, up 1 penny. Light Sweet Crude is back a couple of bucks. Is that right? Yeah, it's back $2, trading at 57.36 out here. The leaders to the upside in the market dollar-wise, you've got uh, Chubb, Chubb Corp, up 27 bucks, and 28% must be a buyout there. That's going on. CB is the uh, ticker symbol. Yeah, uh, it confirms an acquisition. Uh, Teladoc, that's up 64%. What the heck, that's got to be another acquisition. I should have checked the screens before I logged in. That's an IPO. Um, but I didn't have Bassett Furniture. That's been around. Well, that's up 20%. Son of a gun. What's Bassett? B S E T. Man, oh man, now it's his first, second quarter results. Huh. That looks like that is uh, just simply, uh, that's quite a uh, move in Bassett Furniture up 19%. So we'll certainly take a look at that. Wind Resorts up five bucks. Uh, to the downside, Edgewell Personal Care looks like. That's off 31 bucks, down 23%. Relix, R E L X, Relax, N V E N L is a ticker symbol. That's off 66%. Well, we'll have to figure out what's really going on. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll make a commitment to you. I won't do that anymore. I'll make sure that, you know, a couple minutes before the show, I at least cl click through some of these stocks that are uh, moving in the uh, marketplace so that I. Uh, uh, only really focus on, uh, on what we need to. Okay, so speaking about just focusing on what we need to, uh, two things out here. First, you may want to know, and the, and the charts, the chart, the two charts I'm going to share with you, well, several charts, all the charts I share with you, I think are pretty cool. But the chart that I'm about to uh, put on the screen here right now, it's um, I'll put the 120-minute chart here for the uh, S&P futures and the uh, NASDAQ futures because it's a beauty. And when I say it's a beauty, the lines of demarcation to the upside are as clear as as day out here. And in fact, I'm going to put it up for the uh, I'll put it up for the Dow futures and the Russell as well. So we've got nice uniformity across the board out here. You know, oftentimes price travels in well, price price travels in really three directions: sideways, we call those horizontal trading ranges. Trending to the upside, right? So diagonal, lower left, upper right, uh, an ascending, uh, uh, an ascending uh, price channel, rising price channel, or a descending price channel. Order. Now, right now, if we take a look at the two-hour charts here, the top portion of my chart is the uh, S&P futures. The bottom portion is the uh, Nasdaq futures out here. Now, both of these put in some nice bottoming signals. What does Stevie mean by that? If you take a look at the top chart, you made a nice seventh wave move to the downside. 
makes that trade pretty easy because your stop is just one tick actually below the low of that candle session. In this case here, let me get my cursor out here for you make it a little bit easier it's this candle right here uh, came in at uh, two o'clock in the afternoon yesterday when we were on the air uh no we were going off the air well when we were on the air it was forming two hour chart obviously and uh, nice bull sash, nice reversal candle, uh, you know, above the uh, Taz market profile. I mean, uh, and, and he had a price relative strength divergent pattern out there, you know, so he really got everything. Now, what price did overnight, uh, what it did uh, earlier this morning, was price ran right up into the top of that descending price channel. And look at this candle right here where my cursor's at at 6 o'clock this morning. So during that 6 o'clock hour, between 4 and 6 o'clock, you had price move all the way right up. I mean, that was like two of the T out here. Now, look, we use these as guidelines. We don't need to be exact out here. But price ran right up into that area. Now, he didn't get a reversal signal, a little bearish uh, engulfing bear sash uh, style candle that uh, took place here as we came into the 12 noon hour. Um, at this stage of the game, it looks to be just a normal pullback. But it's always a possibility that price will now go all the way back down to the bottom of the channel. I will say this about the channel lines that you're looking at on my screen. The ones on the bottom are not as, the one on the bottom is not as significant as the one on the top. I'm fairly um, convinced that the one on the top is really the key level. If we see any close above that, that's going to give you a confirmed change in trend. Same is the case inside the NASDAQ 120-minute chart out there. You can see that it, too, ran right into fact. This uh, this actually got up into the top of that, that channel line at 12 noon or during the uh, 12 the uh, 10 a.m. to 12 noon session. So sometime during that time period, price ran right up into that, formed a little bearish engulfing candle. Now we've got a retracement that's going on. We'll take a look at retracement levels and where price may head to out here. Oh, I guess all sevens on my uh, screen just a moment ago for the uh, Dow. Somebody in Vegas pulled the, uh, pull the, pull the slot machine, would you? Now I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, same two charts, same time frame, I should say. But the upper uh, chart is the uh, Dow future. The lower chart is Russell 2000 which has got a 15-minute delay on the bottom portion of the chart. The upper chart does not. But you can see here, now these channel lines were drawn in here um, over the weekend. Yeah, it was over the weekend. It was Sunday when I uh, figured out how to easily go ahead and put uh, the uh, same time frame. I was kind of like, I, I knew how to do it. I just never really had dawned on me or thought about it, you know, just really to, to go ahead and condense space out there. This is, these are some of the charts that newsletter subscribers get on a, a daily basis out here and that way it makes it easy to identify and understand where uh, price is going to find support or and or resistance out here so we can see that top line is really important from a, a trading uh, standpoint that's i believe that i believe that it's a really important level to be paying attention to so that's what's going on that we'll take a look at retracements here i'm going to skip around just for a moment because just as we were coming on the air one of our uh, denners was looking to take a long position inside of the es mini and what i said to him remember we took a look we took a look at both the uh, dow 100 I'm sorry, the ES Mini and the NASDAQ 120-minute time frame. And that had several patterns that came together all at the same time. Uh, pr uh, you had price relative strength divergent pattern. You had a uh, seventh wave candle session to the downside. Oh, I grabbed the wrong chart out here. Oh, but we, we will go back and take a look at that. Um, I, I, but I was trying to find the 10-minute chart because this trader trades on a, a short-term basis out here. And as he was taking a look at the uh, trade, I just said, hey, uh, what's kind of cool, we take a look at these patterns out here. If we look at the high that was put in this morning, this is a 10-minute chart. So these patterns that we look at to work on all the different time frames out there. It just depends what it is that you trade. Now, as price moved higher this morning at 5.30, when it did that, it was actually at 6, uh, 5.40. 5.40 this morning, you got a confirmation of a seventh wave session to the upside. Well, just out of, you know, I don't know how theater works out here. It just does. As we were coming on the air, as this trader was taking a look at uh, maybe putting on a, a trade, and I believe it was the ES Mini, uh, at this stage here, um, and this is a 10-minute chart, out here because on the five minute chart that I don't get I don't get these same seventh inning uh, uh, sessions out here now this won't be confirmed for another four minutes but it looks to me like you're going to get a confirmation and that really says if you were to trade this you were going to utilize this as one of your tools out here come on don't do that to me we're on live tv uh, all you have to do is put a, a, a stop below 2060 not below it's a you put it at 2060.50 at uh, 50 cents out here, and you're trading at <clears throat> 2063. So that's a point and a half. 
Um, you know, that's a seventy uh five dollar um stop on that. Well depending on when you would get depending on when you got it if you got in the trade. But in any event, so we've got that uh and that 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 does not this does not mean that the low will hold, but we'll see if it does here during the uh during the rest of the uh, next forty five minutes out here. So that's on the ultra short term chart. Now the um speaking of uh, G's out there, we'll be singing in the key of G out here. Um I did have the monthly chart on my screen. In fact, I got a couple, uh, one email asked me if I would be kind enough to try to find the most bearish patterns that I could or reasons or justification why the market has made a major top. As you know, all of you that are listening on this show, you know that I'm calling for the market at the moment to make a, a nice summertime bottom out here. And I believe, based on the uh, chart patterns that we saw form over the past couple of days, that that has taken place out there. We, we start moving lower below those lows from yesterday, and then all bets are off with regard to that. And I'll just have to take a look at other patterns. But at this stage of the game, uh, things look pretty good. In fact, let me do this here before I go to, to, that, to, to answer that question with regard to if I was looking for the most bearish potential the most potentially bearish patterns out there what would they be so i'm going to go ahead and review that because i always like looking at both sides of the trade out here but i did mention retracements so let's go ahead and do this let me come in here and i'm going to just go to that 120 minute time frame chart and if we take a look at the retracement that's underway as we speak right now this becomes pretty easy for us we're just simply going to go from that low as uh, that took place right around 12 30 i believe yesterday afternoon up to the high this morning that was what 5 30 or so and you can see that price here on the 120-minute chart, it's up against its uh, TAS market profile low that just formed here during this two-hour session. Uh, it would be nothing for the ES Mini to spike 2058.50. Now, that obviously is, uh, is different than what we took a look at on that 10-minute chart. If that 10-minute chart pattern fails, you'd have to say that, uh, you know, tagging the 0.618 retracement, there would be nothing wrong with that. 2058.50 is it. And if we take a look at what's going on volume wise inside of the market if we take a look at today's opening range out here we'll see that price had pulled back uh, below the actual breakout now I take a look at a breakout I'm just take a look at some wide ranging bars these took place uh, at 430 440 450 uh, earlier this morning these wide ranging bars typically you just simply draw a horizontal line uh, across the uh, bottom of that at this stage here that becomes a resistance uh, band because price broke out clear to me that price broke out it, you know either broke out there or right here either way and when I say right here I'm talking about 415 you know that's that's where the breakout. I guess there was a wide ranging bar here at 3:30 this morning. That would put the breakout right about right about right about here if we we're going to take a look at it. But uh, I guess the point of this chart here is we've just seen just really a steady pullback on some light volume. Nothing has been any of any significance to the downside as of 1:19 p.m. This is Steve Rhodes with TFN, and we'll be right back, folks. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's up 103. S&P's up uh, 11. Composites up 18. Russell 2000 just turned uh, green here for the moment. Uh, and happy July 1st, by the way. Uh, if you're a trader in the uh, marketplace, uh, you should know the answer to this question. I posted it in the den. Nobody, nobody answered it uh, for me out there. And the question is this. Do you know what percentage of the time, historically I'm speaking, to go back like 80 years, what percentage of the time July 1st is a up day? in the marketplace out there. I'll come back to that in a moment. I'm going to go back here to take a look at the uh, five-hour chart here for the ES because now this chart's going to go ahead and uh, Jay says the bias is up. Uh, Big-time bias is up out there. And uh, this is a five-hour chart here for both the uh, ES Mini and the uh, NASDAQ out here. Now, you know, they didn't make uh, seventh wave moves to the downside, but they got low enough. We've got some uh, bullish reversal signals down here. And as we came into the 9 a.m. hour, it's the uh, first time. Remember, we're taking a look at those uh, trend lines inside the 120-minute chart, those channel lines. And that's really a key. Those are key levels for us to be watching, in my opinion. But another key level, looking for an early signal that the market really is, uh, a, a, has formed a, a bottom, viable bottom, um, you know, especially if you were looking for a summertime low here. As you can see, price right now is just trading right into that um, nine-period exponential moving average right there. So we'll see. We had price close over it. Uh, whenever you get above a, a different support level uh, or resistance level, in this case, you come back, you test it. Um, you know, if price can 
stay above that area. That's another early warning signal. The answer to that uh, question is, uh, well, if I gave you, would you take an 80% odd, or 82 is what I should say, 82% odds that uh, today the S&P would finish higher out there? That's the type of uh, that's the type of bias to the upside that the S&P has on July 1st out there. And it goes up from 82% of today's update out there. So you might want to put that one on your calendar out there and look for some type of viable bottom on uh, July 1st. Now, tomorrow's the uh, trading day, last trading day before the uh, calendar, before the uh, July 4th. And that bias is up nearly as high as today is. So we'll see whether or not uh, that lives up to its historical perspective out there. Now. Back to the, well, not, not, I won't go back to the, because uh, i got three minutes here. Let's go back to the looking for the most bearish thing that we can find out here. And that's also good because whatever it is that we come up with, um, if any of those levels get taken out, they'll be able to provide us with some important information with regard to the uh, market. My, what I anticipate as the markets are going to go take out the highs that we've already seen for the uh, year. Now, with regard to what the overall market is doing, who's in control, even with the market being up, well, look, when we took a look at that 120-minute chart, you cannot possibly say that, well, it's the, 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 the bull. Is there something here for the bulls or something for the bears? But the reality is it's still sellers that are in control of the uh, marketplace out here. The bulls are in no way out of the uh, woods. In order for them to get out of the woods, you need to see the price oscillator get above the uh, zero mark now early on in the session today the nasdaq composite so at about mm, 10 o'clock in the morning or so maybe it was a little bit later than that uh the nasdaq composite the center panel on my screen actually got above zero what does that mean that means that net net advancing issues to go ahead and push that price push the price oscillator up above zero New York Stock Exchange, uh, it, it wasn't doing that. I was not expecting it to do that today. Uh, if it did, it would be, uh, you know, just absolutely huge out there. But, I, you know, as far as, so until these price oscillators get above zero, it tells you that it still is the sellers who basically have control. I say basically, it is the sellers who have control of the uh, market out here. Now, there's an interesting, uh, there, and, and remember, these these readings, these price oscillators that we take a look at, they don't mean as much intraday. They really mean something at the end of the uh, trading session. Because at that stage, all the technical traders that come take a look to get a feel for what is the market uh, doing, what has it just done out here, am I on the right side of the trade, the wrong side of the trade, it gives them that opportunity after the market has closed to look at some clear signals out here, some clear trending signals. So at this stage of the game, on that trending signal, it is still the uh, sellers that are in control. Lose a little bit of control each and every moment. Moment, and you've got a bias to the upside today, a bias to the upside tomorrow. It's not at all inconceivable, especially if the market were to finish up at its high today. Uh, they're not saying that, that it's going to do that. I do believe the market will finish higher. I'm just simply based on history. Um, but it's not inconceivable for all these price oscillators to get above zero tomorrow on July the uh, 2nd. Tomorrow's July 2nd, right? Yeah, July 2nd out there. So when we get back from this break, let's go take a look at we're going to we're going to go dig deep and we're going to go back and take a look at the S&P 500. We'll start off just taking a look at the monthly. Then we'll go take a look at the quarterly and I'll show you I can find something to be scared about, bearish about. This is Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile trader's market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 97 points. The S&P is up about uh, 10. So to take a look at what would be the most bearish patterns that we could uh, find out here. If we take a look at the monthly uh, chart for the S&P 500, uh, last month, the month of June, we're in July right now, it actually, if you come off of the uh, low out here back in uh, well, that was, uh, what, July? No, that was uh, uh, October of 2011. If you come off of the low in October in 2011 and you start uh, doing your wave counts to the upside out here, uh, the month of uh, June is now confirmed. Well, actually, it was May, right? So the month of May, the top there was confirmed as a seventh wave move to the upside. Just as uh, we did, just as Jay and I did on the uh, downside here on the 10-minute chart, just as we looked at inside of the 120 minute chart uh, patterns out there uh, they are at the uh, level where the rubber band can be so stretched that it can have quite a, a snap back there so that is a reason to be concerned now I will tell you that the top in 2007 if I pull this well I've got to add some more data out here data series 
I don't know why it wasn't out there. Uh, let me do this here. Let me see if it pops up on my screen. Maybe it's CNYSE. Give me a moment here to uh, do that. Yeah, but there we go. Now, the tops in 2007, the top in 2000, the bottom uh, down here in uh, 2003, um, you know, each of those had a, a nice price relative strength divergent pattern out here, a price extended beyond where it was. It's the most consistent pattern associated with tops and uh, bottoms out there, more consistent than anything that I have been able to identify. We don't have that pattern in play here. Uh, right now. I mean, you'd really have to stretch. We just don't have that pattern that is in play. So that says, okay, that uh, seventh wave to the upside is suspect. But but my role here is to say, hey, can I come up with, can I make the case that the market has made a substantial top? That would be one of them. Now, as you know, or if you didn't know here, if I go ahead and we take a look at the uh, consolidation pattern, one of the consolidation patterns, let me try to draw a, well, let me do it like this. Let me do it like this. Let's uh, come take a look at it on this chart here, and I will just simply clean it up a bit. So we just get a blank chart. Give me a moment here to uh, do that. We'll go back to a, a monthly time frame chart. We'll just simply get rid of everything out here. Uh, there we go. And now we just have to do this and change this to a monthly time frame. So we got a nice little black uh, chart. In fact, let's get rid of that. Let's hide that. There we go. Now, one of the patterns that's in play here, the reason why I have been uh, suggesting that the 2350, 2450 level would uh, be the uh, target for the uh, S&P is because of this box that I just drew here. This little consolidation box it goes back a little bit further. It's like about 16 years or so. I believe, and typically when you break any kind of consolidation, you do a measured move equal to or greater than the consolidation. If I just move this box to the upside out here, and I'd go ahead and I do a little scrunching, what you'll see is here, here, here comes that 2450. So we know that the S&P is broken out of a large consolidation pattern, and it has a measured move. That's really what it's referred to. It has a measured move to the upside equal to or greater than the consolidation. However, um, as Lee Corso might say, hey, maybe not so fast out there. And what, uh, what Lee would be saying with regard to that is I'm going to switch over now to a quarterly chart. So as we switch to the quarterly time frame out here, and I just simply, my data in the S&P only goes back to 1970. But what I do know is that the S&P made a major bottom in, in 1974. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean by that. Here's the monthly chart here for 1974. We can see that in 74, it took out the lows here from April of 1970. And then at that stage, price just went ahead and motored on up to the upside. So what we can use, what you and I can use, is we can use a measured move going back to 1974 inside of the S&P. And if I go ahead and I turn this little blue rectangle on my chart, now this here, let me do this. I'm just simply measuring from the bottom of 2000, from 1974, all the way to the high here in 2000. Okay, so there is one potential move. There's like your A to B equals CD out here, because in essence, that's what I'm uh, doing out here when I'm just simply drawing the box. Many of you don't have that A to B equals CD tool out here. So this is just another way to be able to do that. And if we take a look at that, I'll do it both ways for you. But we just simply come take a look at the, uh, the bottom, the lows that were out here back in 2009. What's interesting is take a look at the exact I mean, it's exact. So this takes us back to 1974. Here, I'll, let me turn on the A to B equals CD pattern. This will go ahead and actually give you a uh, price projection out here. So let's make that the, uh, I don't know if I, I don't think I grabbed it. Let me do this here. Let me make sure that I grab this properly. Uh, it's going to be easier, I think, if I explode it. There we go. So this might be a little bit, and it, like, it doesn't matter if I'm exact for you, does it? No, but I'm gonna, I, I like to be, I like my work to be accurate. I mean, for goodness sake, if I'm going to take your time to do it, so come on. There we go. There's your A point. Your B point out here, ah, son of a gun, is uh, right here in 2000. Let me see if I can, uh, I'm going to have to start over out here, I think. Now, let me see here. Do I know? I think I might be able to do this. I might be able to do this. see. Yeah, there we go. The 666, that devil out here. Now, you can see that the exact one-to-one -one A to B equals CD going back from those lows in 1974, 2157.38. And the actual high that we have seen out here, and da, 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 data window, the actual high that we have seen was uh, 2134.52. So 
really darn uh, close out there. It looks like uh, looks like a uh, month on a quarterly basis. Now, not a doji candle out there. Close, but no cigar. Um, but do you expect a doji candle, high wave candle? That's really what we've seen the last two quarters out here. So for both the first and the uh, second quarter, now that is a signal of a market that is tired. Well, shoot, you and I know that to be the case because the market overall, for the most part, with the exception of the NASDAQ composite, hasn't really done a whole heck of a lot. So if I were going to go ahead and try to identify could this be it could this be the big one what the guy from sanford and sons what would what, what, what did he uh, what was her name could this be the big one what was her name out there well i don't remember but i do remember that uh, one of my favorite movies uh, my big fat uh, greek wedding gus now i don't remember the actor's name out there but gus would say there you go so that would be taking a look at a monthly chart that gives you that uh, potential uh, important high signal out there. Here, just simply go back to 1974 inside the S&P, and you've got a 100%. Uh, you've got a 1 to 1A to B equals CD to the uh, upside out there. What I will tell you is this move here, as you can see, so to get from 1974 to 2000, um, we have been able to make that move in a much quicker period of time. This is very strong. In fact, the next move, if uh, the 2157-ish area gets taken out, takes you up to that 2562. That'd be your 1 to 1.272 longer term A to B equals CD. That would then also go ahead and correlate all the way back into that 2450-ish area. Yeah, it'd be over by about 100 points, but uh, that would, uh, remember, your measured move is equal to or greater than the actual consolidation. And what's interesting here is if we go ahead and we take a look at, somebody might have asked me, what about the NASDAQ composite since it's already at its highs. If we do the same type of thing out there, and I'm glad you asked that uh, question, uh, the NASDAQ composite, if we go back again, because this my date only goes to 1974, but we know that that was a significant bottom. So if we come to 1974 again, and I just go to that high that took place in 2000, and I just simply come back to the uh, lows out here in 2008. Actually, we'll just take uh, we'll just take the lows out here in 2002. That's what we'll do. Uh, then what that tells us is that actually there's more, you know, this has not completed its pattern. In fact, what this would be telling us on that longer term basis, Basis inside the NASDAQ composite. And by the way, quarterly basis, no bullish rever no bearish reversal signal or anything along those lines. This actually says the NASDAQ composite takes you into the 6200 type range out there. So uh, no bearish. Uh, as far as what could be the most bearish pattern inside the NASDAQ composite, um, you know, it's made 100% move or move. But that's just an area, by being able to get back to the 2000 level, that's just an area where price would just simply rest. So that's in trying to come up with what could be the most uh, bearish, uh, if we're going to use that word. Uh, and, and really, we can't use that word. All that we can use, because there's no chance, there's no way, there's no way anybody could possibly define that what the U.S. markets are in is a bear market. It's just, it's unfathomable. All that one could actually say is that the markets may have found a top. That's all that one could possibly say out here. And um, at least that's that's Stevie's read on it. Okay, so enough of that. Uh, that takes care of taking a look at the composite, taking a look at the... Uh, Take a look at S&P 500. Take a look at a number of different time frames out there. Now, let's. Uh, now I've got to go ahead and get this back to kind of daily charts out here, and then turn on a bunch of my uh, tools. We'll go do that. Then we'll go take a look at some of the other things that are moving inside of the uh, market. So give me a moment here just to get this stuff uh, rolling. There we go. Now let's go take a look at what's going on inside the uh, currency world out here. Let's go take a look at the euro, Japanese yen. As we take a look at it, what is it uh, doing at this moment? Um, you know, it had that uh, big move down on Sunday evening, fought its way uh, back out here. So this is a daily chart that we're looking at. Fairly impressive. Uh, just having that uh, continued inside days inside the uh, body of this candle. If it has, uh, you know, mm, so it's it's. It's just, it's not really, it came back to the potential C point of an A to B equals CD to the upside that took place on May 26. It's not really providing us with a, a ton of information out here. So that way it can't really, we can't really rely upon it to help uh, guide us with regard to what the markets want to do. If we take a look at what the euro is doing, I believe the euro is now down below the bottom of its rising price channel. Remember, we looked at this here 
I don't know what the heck is that that's on my screen. Oh, that volume bar. Let's get rid of that. Um, if we take a look at uh, if we take a look at this rising price channel, price came back, was below it, blew through it Sunday at night, fought its way back all uh, early Monday morning, Monday afternoon out there, got back above it. But now we're seeing this level fail. So what does that mean? If we see a failure of this rising price channel. That said, price is likely to come back and uh, test a level of support. That level of support inside the euro takes you all the way back down into the May 27th area, into that 108 and change area. Uh, so if the euro ends uh, badly here, that uh, it could find some support maybe at this uh, 108.93 area. Maybe it's the top of the swing point for May 27th. Again, it's a daily chart that we're taking a look at. But that's what's going on with regard to those two currency pairs. If we take a look at the Japanese yen, the U.S. dollar versus Japanese yen, you know, just like the uh, yen, uh, the euro out here, you know, it's really not doing a whole heck of a lot. We probably have to really switch down to some intraday charts in order to try to find some patterns, either buy or sell patterns out there. Uh, Great British Pound, Great British Pound trading a bit lower here this morning, or the seat, as I say this morning, so used to, uh, still used to, to uh, thinking of myself in the uh, seat here doing the uh, morning show. This afternoon, though, we can see the Great British Pound is pulling back. And you say pulling back to where another key is here. Will this go ahead? I would have to say, based on what the euro is doing, this is going to come and test the uh, bottom of that rising price channel out there. The question becomes, will it break it? just as the euro has right uh, as it has as of right now. And I don't know the answer to that question, but it looks to me like that becomes your target area. And just use the body of the candle, you know, for all of you drawing, uh, following the head at home, just use the body of the candle from April 13th. You can then use as your next touch point, let's say June 2nd. That's going to take you into June 8th out there. And that's going to give you a nice channel line versus a trend line. Trend line, we go ahead and we use the actual uh, bottom or top of the wick in this case here, because we're drawing from the bottom looking for support. We would be using the bottom of the wick of the uh, candle. So that's what's going on in uh, currency land inside of uh, gold out here. You know, if we just take a look at our gold chart, still just playing inside its sandbox out here. That's the blue rectangular box that price has been traveling in since the early part of February. Of course, what you and I like to do now is we like to take a look at how gold is doing, performing, priced in euros. So as we switch over to that price right now, you can uh, buy. I an ounce of gold for 1,056 euros and looks like 40 cents at this uh, 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 point in time. Now, there I did add one new line to my uh, screens out here. The bottom portion of the uh, chart that happens to be the uh, gold priced in euros. The top portion is gold priced in U.S. dollars. In the top portion of the chart, again, that red diagonal line from upper left to lower right, major significant uh, resistance. Likewise, the green line on the upper panel portion of my chart, that also is support. Price has not fallen back to support. Let's look for price to fall back to support and see if it holds. With regard to gold priced in euros. It was really the 1,000 euro area uh, that I was originally looking for because that is uh, just simply we've seen several tops in that price uh, level. We've seen that take place back in September 2013, in March 2014, and in December 2014. And once we saw price break that area, uh, price just simply moved higher with some conviction inside of the uh, market. And again, uh, I focusing focusing in on uh, gold and the uh, priced in euros just simply because of all of the well, you know the reason why it's because of my big fat Greek wedding that's going on over there. Um, but hey, as we speak right now, there is another line here of potential support where price has been dancing around and in priced in euros is what I should say. And that's really the low here of February 18th, 2015. That's the yellow line going across my screen. So at this stage of the game, gold's not doing much in euros or in dollars out there. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Right now, we've got the Dow. She's up about 90, 100, 108 points. S&P's up 11. I'll be right back, folks.
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over $70. 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. If you're like me, you're always looking for ways to diversify your financial portfolio. Everbank's innovative market-safe CD can help you diversify while protecting your principal deposit. In fact, Everbank unveiled a new five-year market-safe power metal CD, which combines the power of gold, silver, and copper. Metal prices are currently low, so this CD could really deliver. Consider the facts. You get exposure to three valuable metals in one index CD and have the potential to earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if the metals increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should they decrease? No worries. There's zero risk to your principal here, as you still get 100% of it back. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. No annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest is paid on the CD. Intrigued yet? The July 9th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is a member FDIC. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. Um, you know, one of the charts out here we haven't talked about uh, is the uh, Nikkei. Let me put the Nikkei. Uh, now, what's cool about the uh, Nikkei out here, a couple things. Number one, um, let me see. That blue line reverts back to a, a swing point from long ago, I believe. That's at the 20,809 area. Let me try to find out where that takes us to. 
There we go. So that is the highs out here from back in uh, 2000. So we can see price here has gotten back to its 2000 highs, you know, similar to the NASDAQ composite getting back to uh, the 2000 highs in that area. So the Nikkei, in essence, has done that uh, same thing out here. Now, that's one of the patterns. This is a weekly. I'm going to go switch back to a, a daily chart out here. Uh, because uh, what we can both learn from, there's nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. What you and I are going to do is we're going to look at a, a bearish pattern out here. So we know price made 100% move of a move, right? Oftentimes, price can uh, do something uh, different. I'm going to turn off these uh, TAS boxes out here. I'm going to turn off, I think, is that a retracement of Fibonacci? Let me turn that off. So there's that 20,809 mark. Now, what the Nikkei did, the indice did out here, and it has done it uh, before, but what it did do over a series of uh, two, four, six trading sessions out here is it has nice island reversal top. If you take a look at the uh, Nikkei trading day of June 22nd, the actual high out there was 20,433. The very low of the next day was 20,531. So we've got a gap in price out here. Strong move, that's really what the uh, gap means. And then with regard to the Nikkei, makes a little bit higher high on uh, June 24th, backs up for a couple of uh, days. But then voila, June 29th this week, Sunday evening, you know, uh, goes ahead and gaps down, creates an island, a void of space between that gap up that took place on June 23rd and no price having traveled with inside that island uh, when there was a gap down on June 29th. Very bearish pattern out here. As I say, nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern out here. And you really need to go study the Nikkei. I'd have to do some more studying on it. But what I can say, what we should be able to say, is getting above that 20,809, but quite frankly, clearing the June 24th high, 20,952. As I say, nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. And as we speak right now, that has one of the most bearish patterns that you can find. And it could be one of the bullish. just happens to be up at the uh, top. So that is a bearish island reversal inside of the uh, Nikkei out there. Um, to finish things up here in the next uh, minute or so, what should we really look at? Uh, you know, not a ton has changed since the time period that we have uh, come on the air. So let's go back and help uh, Jay out. Let's go see where we're at in that 10-minute uh, ten, ten chart for the ES Mini. Excuse me. Ah, one of those hairballs that flew inside of my uh inside of my throat out here uh, so we can see that that uh, seventh wave uh, has uh, held thus far but we can see price here on its 10 minute chart ran into yeah uh, and the reason why i'd say hairballs because we're tigers right this is tfnn this is tiger financial News network it has to be can't be a dust mite or something that blows in as you you know as you're breathing in and out it's got to be a hairball does it not we can see there is resistance here at the 2060 11 67 level on the uh, 10 minute uh, base if you trade on a short-term basis here with that taz market uh, profile um that does not mean that that price is going to pull back it just says that hey you're up against some resistance out there on your 10-minute time frame. So, folks, uh, stay tuned on this wonderful Wednesday. If you're off to start your holiday a bit early out here, uh, make sure that you drive safe. We only have one more day of uh, trading. Today should be an update. Hey, if it's going to follow suit, first, it's the first day. It's the, actually, it, it has the highest percentage probability of any trading day of the year to be an update. The close is lower. That could be, that could be problems in River City. Folks, until tomorrow at uh, 1 p.m., uh, have a great day and stay tuned. Our man David White will be up next. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will help 
help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.